Today we're going to go through how to rebuild a displacement pump on an E10 machine. This is one of our old machines we've had here in Huntsville for several years. Uh, we've been using it. It's time to rebuild the pumps. As you can see, the ISO has been leaking quite a bit, so we're going to go through it today. First off, make sure your valve is shut if you do have liquid in your tanks. We flush this with DBE, so it does have DBE in the system, so make sure that's closed. You're going to loosen your fluid uh, inlet to the pump. Once it's loose and out of the way, you're good. Now you have your pump outlet, the high pressure line. Okay, you've got your end cover off your motor. Now this particular machine has the cycle switch or the cycle sensor, so this cover has been added later, so you can tell it has the sensor in it. So you just want to kind of keep it out of the way. And then you've also got the magnet that's on the end of the crank. Be very careful not to lose that magnet. Now we have four bolts that we need to get loose. Okay, now the important part on these pumps that are a little different than the ones on an EXP is the gear will kind of come with it, so you want to leave that part with the machine. very important that if this gear does come off you have to get it back in the same position to match the other side. If these gears aren't aligned then your two pumps are out of sequence each with each other and they're not going to pump at the same rate. They need to be in sync with each other. So very important to either keep that there or just when you put it back together be very very careful to get that aligned back with the other side. So we're going to take this to the bench and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got the pump off. As you can see, it has been leaking some ISO. That's why we got to rebuild it. Uh, big thing to remember, though, these do have some washers that go between the gear housing that you're seeing and the, and the motor. So if they're not on here, they may be stuck to the motor. But a good idea is I always going to take these. I'm going to go put them back on the motor so that I know they're in spot and I, in their spot and I don't lose them. All right, so. Well, now we have to separate the piston from the actual displacement rod. Pull this little cover off. Okay, so you can see there's a little clip right here, a little keychain looking ring. You have to pry that up out of the way. And then underneath that, there's a pin. And all that pin does is just push down out of the way. Let's see if we can get it to move. OK, 
Okay, so now that you have that, these two pieces should separate. Again, try not to tear that up. But that should be separated now. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to loosen this star nut. Okay, now this may be a bit of a challenge being that we've got so much ISO in here and it's, it's going to be on the threads, uh, but hopefully not too bad. It's going to take a little bit of doing. All right, so we'll worry about cleaning all that up uh, in a little bit. We want to make sure we get our pen. We don't lose that. We will need to reuse it. Uh, not too bad at all in there. Most of that uh, came off because hopefully you do oil it every day like you're supposed to, and it should clean up pretty easily. So this is the biggest problem we see with them, is this is that black plastic piece uh, that is supposed to be in the top of this and that's what always comes loose and actually ends up stuck to the shaft of this if you don't put enough of oil on this. Uh, the manual says every night when you're done you should be using your ISO pump oil and putting some oil inside of this to lubricate that. This doesn't have a TSL system like our big pumps so you have to do it manually every day. Okay? If not you're going to end up with problems like this or even worse. So next thing, we're going to take apart the bottom half. This is very, very similar to your big pump, just a smaller version. Inside of there, you should have the check balls. So you're going to have the actual seat, a washer, the check ball and the cage. So we're going to clean all these up just a little bit with some brake clean and put them in to soak. Uh, some of these parts you will just replace and you're not going to reuse. So next you just want to clean out the inside of there. There is that white Teflon o-ring down at the bottom. We'll have to get that out later. Okay, those are all ready to soak. Now the tricky part with this may be getting this shaft out of this pump since it's got so much stuff built up on this outside piece. Um, we're going to have to see if we can kind of persuade that to come off or not. Not too bad. Again, just be careful not to tear up the shaft itself. Okay, so let me see if we can drive that out of there. All right, so it came out pretty easy. So this is your displacement rod. Same on the big pump as it is this pump. You've got your lower check ball that was in the bottom. You've got the port where the liquid comes in. It runs up and it goes up to the upper check ball. You can see that upper check ball is pretty small, so it can very easily get you know, piece something like this size get up in there, it's going to make that pump quit working. So again, clean that off and we'll, we'll reuse most of that. Okay, other than that, you got to take the top part off. Again, it's going to be kind of crusty, we'll see how easy that comes apart. Okay, so I don't want to damage this too much, I do have to reuse this part, so uh, we may have to heat it, but I'm going to try pipe wrench. Again, just try not to tear it up or bend it. It's on there pretty good, so 
I'm going to try heating it up a little bit. Again, where are your respirator on this? Doesn't take very much heat. ISO melts at about 160, 165 degrees, so you don't have to get this thing really cherry red hot, just warm. Okay, so again, that's got the felt packings and everything inside of there. Some of them are still stuck in here, so we'll clean that up again. Gonna have to probably let most of this soak for NMP for a couple hours at least to try to get some of that off of there. So. We're going to put all this in something and get it in a bin of parts and start soaking our parts. And when we're ready to put it all back together, we'll come back to you.